In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a powerful psychological trigger to get attention to the exact content on your website that you want to get attention to. Right now, I'm going to show you two versions of the same homepage for five seconds each, and then I'm going to ask you this question, what stood out to you? So let's go first. Here's the website. Well, wait five seconds. Okay, that should have been long enough. Here is another version of the same page. Okay, where did your eyes go on this page versus this page? On this page, it probably went to the big headline, right? Haley Martin, you know, if you've been to the website, haven't been to the website before, that's where your eyes would have gone. However, on this one right here, where did your eyes go? It went to that notification bag right there, right? Not notification bag, notification badge right there in the menu, right where it says latest products. It has a red badge that says new and it's bouncing. First, I'm going to show you how to do this on your website. And we're going to do some really cool things. It's going to be super easy. It doesn't cost anything. It's just some adding some code in a certain way. But just ask yourself, why does this work? We see these all the time on our mobile phones and they're irresistible, right? You see a Facebook and there's a round number of no, how many notifications are in, uh, in a little badge on the top right. And you see that on every single application. Well, I use an iPhone. I don't use an Android, but I'm sure Android has a very similar system for showing you these notifications. We are just drawn to them. And now you're going to be able to, after this tutorial, use this powerful trigger, mental trigger on your website to get attention to exactly what you want to get attention to. So if this kind of content interests you, I put up tutorials like this all the time. Consider clicking on the subscribe button and turn on those notification bells if you don't want to lose out on techniques like this that can grow your website. All right, let's go into this tutorial. So actually, I'm going to have to go down here because the badge is in the top right. There's one little thing I didn't show you. Check this out. You can actually make anything happen You when someone clicks on it. You can have it take them to a page on your website. But as a little bonus at the end of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do something cool like this. It's a little slide out notification. So the person is still on the page, but then you get this little slide out like that. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, depending on the tools you have, you might have to use a different tool than I'm using. All right, so I got inspiration for this tutorial from two places. Time to give a little props. Beamer, I've been using Beamer on my website for a very long time. The only negative is it calls external scripts, so it might add a little bit of load time to your website, but they're kind of the originator of it. So you can see right here, we got the bouncing badge right there, and when you click on it, it pops this up. They have a phenomenal service, uh, so you're going to be able to do something similar. Uh, but I didn't know how to add a badge to my menu navigation. So I was in a Facebook group and I came across this article and I thought, huh, this is exactly what I want. I want to add this badge notification. I'll put a link to this article down below. I had to modify what they were doing though in order to make it work for my situation. Okay, so let's get to the tutorial. Here is my WordPress dashboard. What we're going to have to do is play around a little bit with this text, this code right here, and we have to put it in the right places. So this bit of code right here goes to wherever you store CSS, custom CSS on your website. And you can manipulate some of these values to change colors and text size and things along those lines. So for me, I like to put custom CSS in the customizer. So you go to appearance and then you click on customize. And I think this is the best place for me anyhow to store custom CSS. Sometimes people will put it in their child theme and that's fine as well. Okay, so there's a little spot right here. You see it, it says additional CSS. And when you click on it, you can see I've already done all that. So you just copy and paste this in here. Now I'll put this on my website eventually. For the time being, 
I will just link to it in the video description box of this video, and then I'll replace that to a link to my website. So you're just going to copy and paste this entire bit of code. Let me just walk you through what this is doing. So right here is the font size of the badge. Right now it's sent to nine pixels. If I wanted to make it crazy large, there you go. But I don't in this case, so I'll make it nine. And then here's some spacing right here. And you can determine right here, uh, this pulls it up. So if I didn't have this, it would be on the same line as the text of the menu item. Okay, uh, so we got margin. Right here is the color of the text. And so all Fs, these are color codes, is white. And then right here is the background color, which I have this stand out red, which is that typical notification color. Okay, and then we have some padding you could play with and a border radius if you wanted to play around with this to try to get it to look like a circle. If you were gonna have a number in that badge, it's entirely up to you. Now, this is optional. This is it to make it bounce. You don't have to make it bounce. So if I was to actually change uh, this right here, I'm sure it would stop bouncing. See, it stopped bouncing. So you can decide if you want it to bounce or not. I'll show you how to do that when we're adding this to the menu item. All right, that's completely optional. And then this bit of text right here is also part of what makes it bounce. So this right here is for its bouncing, and this right here is for its other style and the bouncing is completely optional. So you're just gonna want to open up the text file and copy and paste that bit of code here into the customizer. And then you will click on publish, that will save it. And then you could click on the X to get out of this section entirely. Now what we need to do is add it to our menu. So I'm gonna go to appearance and then menus cause that's where your menus go. And then I, you see I have my main me navigation menu right here. So you'd wanna pull up your navigation menu. Okay, so I actually have already created it right here, but what we're gonna do is I'll just go ahead and delete that and we will create a brand new one. Okay, so this is where you gotta decide where you want that link to go. So for me, later I'm gonna show you how to make it trigger a pop-up. So but if you didn't want to and you wanted it to go to a static page, this is what you would do. So you'd find your page. Say I wanted to add my notification badge actually to where it says contact me. I'm gonna open it up and then we're gonna take this little bit of text right here and we're gonna copy and paste this into the label. So right here you can see there's a bit of code and then right here it says new. This is the text that goes in that batch. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and then I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna paste it right there. So now it's just pasted right there, right next to where it says contact me and I'll click on save menu. And then I will go here and I will do a refresh. Okay, so now contact me is bouncing and when it's clicked on, it's gonna go to that particular page. So you can add this to any particular page that you want. But like I said, we are going to make it do a pop-up with the rest of this tutorial. All right, so that's pretty much it. You can add this little bit of text right here and you can make it say whatever you want. So I have it say new, I'm gonna change this text to say latest. So now it says latest, I'm gonna click on save menu and you're gonna see when I go here and do a refresh, now it says latest, okay? That's pretty cool. Now, if you didn't want it to bounce, uh, we have this right here where it says class, and this is where it's calling up what you want it to do. So for the menu badge, this is what is pulling in the style right here. But right here where it says badge bounce, that is where it's pulling up the style here, which creates that animation. So if you didn't want this, you would basically just take where it says badge bounce and get rid of it. Let me show you how that's done. I'm gonna go ahead and click the arrow down, badge bounce, gonna highlight and get rid of that. So now it just says menu badge with the brackets there. I'll click on save menu. And now when we go to the front end, we do a refresh, you're gonna see it's not bouncing. 
bouncing, entirely optional, and completely up to you. Now, I will say that when you do this and you add this code, I had initially ran into a problem where the area around where it says latest right here, it was kind of stretching. And this was using the free version of the Astra theme. Uh, it'll work fine with the Divi theme because that's kind of where I got some of the this tutorial to begin with. But on the free Astra theme, I had that problem and I'm waiting for them to maybe give me a little snippet of code so it'll look perfect. But if I'm on the pro version for this website and it should work, it should work on most themes. It depends on how they code their menu, but it should work fine. Uh, but what I did was I have the pro version and when I enabled the nav menu, uh, add-on module for Astra Pro. It just um, formatted fine, but I'm already talking to their support to see what we can do to make it work fine with the free Astra theme since I talk about it so much on this channel. If you wanna look at the professional version of Astra, just visit wpcrafter.com slash Astra. It's a great theme, uh, but there's plenty of great themes out there. I haven't tested it with Generate Press or Ocean WP or the Page Builder Framework, um, but uh, it should work with pretty much any theme depending on how the theme codes the menu. Okay, let's do the fun part. And that fun part is to trigger this and it's a slide in pop-up now this is going to be dependent upon the pop-up tool that you use and how you trigger a pop-up i use elementor pro and if you don't have elementor pro visit wpcrafter.com elementor there's going to be a link down below it's very cheap it's only 49 dollars for a single site license it adds a ton of stuff if you're using Elementor. Anyway, it makes sense if you're using a different page builder, use whatever pop-up tool that you want to use as long as it can be triggered by clicking on the menu. Now, let me show you, just take a minute or two to show you how I made this pop-up and how I made it actually appear by clicking on the menu. So the first thing we wanna do with Elementor Pro is add or create that pop-up. So I have Pro installed, so I have this pop-up option. I'm gonna click on add new and let's give this a name. I'm not feeling that creative. I just named it new pop-up. It really doesn't matter what you name it, okay? And we can actually trigger any of these pop-up templates that we want. Uh, if you just wanted it to pull up some discount coupon or some opt-in thing or whatever, but I kind of am going with this, this element here on the side. So actually, I, I just chose this template right here. We could start from scratch if we wanted, or let's just choose this one, and I'll show you how I modified it to have what I wanted. So the first thing is I'm gonna just delete out all the content there. Oops, and it looks like it has this funny color. That's okay, we're gonna play around with it. So I'm gonna go to the pop-up settings right here, and I'm gonna move it to the right of the screen like that. There I have it. And then it's up to you what width you want. I had a more narrow width, something along these lines. And I didn't like the close button. I just wanted it, if someone clicks out here, it would close that. And then for the animation, you could choose it. I'm gonna have it going on the right. And I sped that up a little bit. So it might happen a little quicker. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back into style here. I, I actually gonna delete this because I don't want that color. And there we have it. So this is fine, the style is looking okay. So what I did is, actually we have one more thing we need to do. We need to change the height to fit to screen. There we go, so now it's taking up the whole height of the screen there. Okay, so we still have that color. Let me clear out the color. I probably should have just started from scratch. Anyways, Elementor Pro has a posts module. So I'm just showing posts, latest posts, because it says latest news, but you can use a filter. So if you say have a physical product or some kind of um, series of blog posts where there's a specific category and you just wanted to show blog posts from that category, you can use any of these filters. So I have the posts right here. It's the post uh, element in Elementor. I'm gonna drag and drop it here. Whatever page builder you're using might have something similar. So I changed the skin to cards 
and so it doesn't look too good but that's because we're having it be in three columns let's just change that to one column and it's already pretty much looking how you want it what i would probably do though is at the very top i would put some maybe opt-in form uh, to see if someone wants to subscribe or have some kind of a title for this section but you could do whatever you want and you could control how many of the blog posts show in here or you can do whatever you want with this uh, so I've got this and I would probably get rid of some of the metadata. I didn't want it down there and it tightens it up and people know what I look like. So I can turn off the avatar right here and I'm just going to go with that. There we have it. And it's looking good uh, if you ask me. So now let me show you how to make this trigger when someone clicks on a menu item. It's simple, and this is actually one of the newer features in the Elementor Pro pop-ups. So I'm gonna click on Settings, I'm gonna click on Advanced, and then there's this option right here that says Open by Selector. So this is where we're gonna choose some string of text that we're also gonna put in that menu item. So I'm going to give this a name. What a dumb name, right? I named it Cool Pop. <laughs> what am I thinking? I put Cool Pop in there, that's okay. So now when you click on Publish, you get this option. And for conditions, I'm gonna add a condition and have it be the entire site. So I'm gonna do a save and close. And we've created this pop-up. And actually the only thing we didn't do is have some kind of an overlay here. You can tweak this however you want, but you need to remember this cool pop right here. If I got this right, this should be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of Elementor. Let's get out of here. And I'm gonna go to my menu right here. So it's under appearance and then menus. And then I'm going to create a new menu item that will trigger that pop-up. So what you have to do is you have to go to custom links and for URL, you're gonna put the pound sign, just like that, and then we'll put some link text, and I named it latest products, and then click add to menu. So what this means is, here actually, let me do a quick save. We just created a link, and when someone clicks on it, it doesn't go anywhere because we just put that pound sign. So when I click on it, it doesn't go anywhere. You see that? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it trigger that pop-up. Now what you need to do, if your menu doesn't show this area that says CSS classes optional, that's where we're gonna put that cool pop. What you need to do is click on screen options and then right here it says show advanced menu properties and check on CSS classes. That will make it so this appears and then I can paste in my cool pop. I'll do a save menu and let's just make sure that's working before we add our badge. Okay, and there we go. I click on it and now it is working. It does a little bit of uh, overlay. You might wanna make it a little stronger. And there we go. Now, the only reason you, you have a little cutoff is because I'm in the back end and it's showing this admin menu bar, okay? That's the only reason it's doing that. So now let's go ahead and add our badge. We'll go to our text right here. And I'm gonna do the bounce, why not? Uh, so I've got this right here. And I'm gonna go here. I'm going back into that menu item and I'm gonna paste it in there. I'm gonna click on save menu. And now I'm gonna do a refresh. And there we go. We've got our badge, we've got it's bouncing. You can have as many of these, I don't recommend more than one. I'll click on it and there we go. That is all there is to it. Uh, here is the text. I'll have a link to it down below. And eventually I will put it in a blog post on my website and you could just copy and paste it across. It'll be super duper easy. You can do a lot of things with this. This can really draw attention to latest products, latest news, latest updates of a product that you might have, latest offers if you're a service-based business. This works. This kind of notification bag badge is really here to stay. So I wanna know what you think about this video in the comment section down below. If you don't have Elementor Pro, you didn't have to use it if you have another tool, but if you don't have it, visit wpcrafter.com slash Elementor. I'll have all the links in the video description box and that will take you over to my website and tell you about a training course I like to give people when they purchase Elementor Pro to get them up and running faster with Elementor. And hey, if you've enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. 
Remember to subscribe, click on the notification bell and share this video out. This is a really cool tutorial. A lot of work went into it. Share this video out. Other than that, I'm pleased to make this video for you and I can't wait to see you in the next video.